In this video, I'm going to show you how you can scroll your long scroll projects in Adobe Captivate. I'm Paul Wilson and I make videos about e-learning, specifically the authoring tool Adobe Captivate. It seems a little over 80% of you who watch my videos are not subscribed. So I'd like to ask you, please hit the subscribe button. And if you like to be notified of things, turn on the notification icon as well so that when I come out with a new video, it alerts you and you can learn that important stuff about Adobe Captivate. One of the viewers of my YouTube channel um, actually wrote on the comments of one of my videos asking if there was a way they could scroll either automatically or using a button from one content block to another in the all new Adobe Captivate. I wasn't aware that there was a way, but another viewer, in fact, a member of my YouTube channel, here's what they wrote. I referred to an Adobe Captivate video on Adobe's site and leveraged Google Gemini to help me out. The method isn't perfect, but I'm able to use it as a workaround in my project. I added a run JavaScript action and used the following. And I'll put this in the description as well. So let's do that today and I'll show you how effective this works and a little tweak to make it work well for you. Okay, so I've got a long scroll project on my screen right now here, you can see it here. And I think one of the difficulties that many learners or students will have is recognizing that they must scroll down to see the rest of this content. So it might not be initially obvious. There is, of course, this indicator for you that lets you know that this is sort of where a standard slide based on the project size would end. And you know, it's got the two little arrows on the outside there. And that's a great guide for you. But how do we make it easy for our students to know that there's more content below? Now, each of these blogs has sort of an internal numbering sequence, right? And through a little experimentation, I found out what those numbers are for these here. Why would it differ from zero, one, two, three, four. Well, you may have deleted some blocks, you may have added some new blocks, you may have changed the order of the blocks, and that can certainly affect how things are gonna go. So there may be a little trial and error with this particular solution, but uh, I, think you'll, I think you'll get it relatively quickly. It's not too difficult to find out. I'm gonna add a button block here, and we're just going to center that block and we'll put some text on it and we'll just say continue. So that's sort of a visual cue to our students that if they click this, they're gonna continue with this project here. Now we go over to the interactions icon in our right hand toolbar. And we're gonna click on more and we'll scroll down this list until we find run JavaScript. So that's gonna create a field here now I'm gonna copy the text that I showed you in the intro of this video, and I'm gonna paste it in here. Quickly explaining that, you know, first of all, we're declaring that this particular content block is going to be something that we're gonna use in this project. And down here, we're going to check if a second element exists before trying to scroll. And if we do decide to scroll, we're gonna to scroll to content block and these little square brackets are going to indicate which content block that we're going to scroll to. Now, as I said, the first one, as I understand it, is content block zero. So this should scroll to the top of this here. So I'm going to click done to save that new run JavaScript. And I'm not going to do it in this video, but Suffice it to say, I could add a whole bunch of other actions as well. I could animate the objects on this block as we enter it. We could also add some audio narration to this. So you can actually do quite a bit with this, not just running the JavaScript, but actually, you know, maybe playing the next block of audio as an example, the narration. So I'm gonna copy this one here and I'm gonna select the next block and I'm going to paste it I'm just using Control-C and Control-V, 
And I'm going to select this new continue button I've created. And we're just going to edit the JavaScript a little bit here. Now, through experimentation, I determined that the next uh, content block I want to scroll to is not content block number two, but in fact, content block four which makes no sense, which is why you're going to have to experiment a little bit here. I'm going to go ahead and click Done, and that is taken care of. So I can copy this one as well now. It's helpful to copy the latest version just to keep track of the numbering that you're using. I'm going to select this character block here, and I'm going to paste in another copy of that button block here. We'll select Continue, and we'll edit the JavaScript. And here we want to actually go to content block five. Press done. And we'll copy this one again. I'll use the right click so you can clearly see. And we'll paste in the new one here. I'll press continue, edit our JavaScript here. And in this case, we are going to scroll to content block seven and click done. So once again, I'm going to copy this and go to the end of the video block that's here, and I will paste in that button as well. We'll select the Run JavaScript, edit this, and in this case, we need to change 7 to 9. So I'll just edit this uh, JavaScript right here, press Done. And I'm going to do one more, but this one's going to be a little bit different. I'm going to paste this one in, and uh, we're going to edit the JavaScript here. And I'm going to change this back to content block zero. Press done. And I'm going to edit this button and say back to top. OK, so now we have sort of a nice chunked series of content items within our long scroll project. And with the help of JavaScript, it should work as expected. Let's preview it and make sure that it does. OK, so we're at the top of our page here. Let's press the first Continue button. And it scrolls down automatically. Nice smooth scrolling to the next block of content. We'll hit Continue again. Now we've got our character item here. And we'll hit Continue. And it brings us down to our two character block. Press Continue. And we've got our video, which we can play and do what, what we wish with it. And then press Continue. And it takes us down to the Ben Franklin quote at the end. And if I click this back to top, scrolls all the way right up back to the very beginning. And of course, now your users will have a nice smooth experience using long scroll projects. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.